Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a seamless pattern swatch in Adobe Illustrator. Now, if you've never made a seamless pattern swatch before, it might look a little intimidating, but I promise if you'll just stick with me, I'm going to give you step-by-step -step instructions, and you're going to find out it's really not so hard after all. You're going to see that these pattern swatches can really make some lovely additions to your artwork, and I think you're going to enjoy this video. Now, we're going to be using the artwork that I've already created for us, and this is the actual swatch we're going to make. I've set up a new document with the pieces that we need, and let's go ahead and get started. The first step is to create the background for the swatch, and it doesn't really matter what size it is as long as it's a square. So I'm going to get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and click on the artboard to open the rectangle dialog box. I'm going to type in 6 inches for the width, tab down and type in 6 inches for the height, and then I'll say OK. Now I'll come over and change the fill color for right now. I'm going to give it a light gray, and that's just so we can see the boundaries, and we'll change that later. I'm going to remove the stroke, though, because you cannot have a stroke applied to a pattern swatch, or it's not going to be seamless. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and I'm going to move the background up so you can see it closely as I add the artwork. First, we'll need to move to the Layers panel. Now, the rectangle has been added to the top of Layer 1. Every new object always goes to the top of the stack. Because it's at the top of the stack, it is above all of these other objects that are already on the artboard, which means that when I try to put the artwork on the background, the rectangle is going to cover it up. So we need to move it to the bottom of the stack. First, I'm going to double click here, and we're going to rename this background. And then I'll just click on it and drag it to the bottom. And now we have it where it needs to be so that our artwork will show up. Now, if you'd like more information about using the Layers panel, I have a tutorial that teaches you how to organize your artwork and your projects in layers. And I think you might find it really helpful. Let's move back over to the Properties panel. And now we're ready to add our artwork. I'll start off with this little three leaf grouping and I'll hold the option key down so that I can drag a copy right over to my background of the swatch and I'll drop it about right here. I want part of the design to be on this background but I also want part of it to be on the artboard. That's really the key to making a nice looking pattern swatch. We don't want all of our artwork to be in the center of this background square. We want it to intermingle with the squares that are going to come up next to it on all four sides. Now let me show you how a seamless pattern swatch actually works. I'm going to select our swatch. I'll hold down the shift and the option keys and I'm going to drag to the right and I want these to intersect so you can see that when they intersect, you shouldn't see any seam at all. I'll delete this. The same holds true for the bottom. I'll select this, hold down the shift and the option keys, and we'll drag to the bottom. And when they intersect, I'll release my mouse. And here again, you don't see any seam. That's why we call it seamless. I'm going to delete this. So when you have parts of your artwork that are outside of the background of the swatch, you've got to add this part that's on the outside of the swatch to the inside of the swatch along the opposite edge. Now let me show you how easy that is to do. I'll select the artwork, come up to Object, Transform, Move. And I don't need to move it horizontally. I need to move it vertically. I know that my square is six inches, so I'm going to type in six inches, and then I'm going to create a copy that is exactly six inches away from the first one. So I'll press copy, and now I have my first piece of artwork that is going to work into this seamless pattern. All right, let's get another one. We'll grab this same leaf pattern again. I'll hold down the option key and I'm going to drag this one over to the right side and I'm going to rotate it. I'll get the rotate tool, keyboard shortcut R, and we'll just turn it here a little bit and then get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V. 
and we're going to let it hang off not as much as the other one did but it's still going to have to match up on the left side so while it's still selected I'll come up to object transform and move again this time we need a horizontal copy but it needs to go to the left so we're going to type in a minus six and then for the vertical we're going to type in zero and again press copy now I have the copy here and the copy here and when this is turned into a pattern swatch it's going to match up perfectly just like this other pattern swatch did I'm going to grab the flower and I'll hold down the option key and we'll drag it here with these leaves I'm going to make another copy I'll hold down the option key and drag my flower out and I'm going to reduce the size just a little bit I'll go up to object transform and scale and I'm going to type in 75 percent here and I have uniform scale checked and I also have scale strokes and effects checked and I'll say OK and I think that'll probably be a good size I'll hold down the option key and we'll place this flower over here on the right now I'm going to add one of my stems and actually all three of these stems are art brushes that I created for this project I like using art brushes when I'm creating pattern swatches because I can move the different designs around and they look a little bit more natural I'll come over and open up the brushes panel and I'm going to select the first brush and I'll get the paintbrush tool keyboard shortcut B draw out one stem here and another stem here then I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V will select this bottom one come up to object transform move this one has got to move up it's not horizontal so we put in a zero here but on the vertical it's a minus six and then press copy so I have this matching here and then let's select this one here go to object transform move and I need a horizontal move so six and then zero for vertical and copy here okay now I'm going to add this bottom art brush I have the paintbrush tool again I'll drag out one stem here and I'll drag out another stem here and it's really okay if these overlap just a little bit they look more natural that way so these are the only two of this design I'm going to use I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and select this first one go to object transform move and we're going to have a horizontal move of six no vertical and copy now then let's get this one up here object transform move this is going to be a minus six for the horizontal and we'll copy that as well I don't think I like the way this stem is overlapping my leaf so while it's selected I'm going to hold down the shift key and select the other design that matches it as well and as long as the two of these are selected together and I move them they're going to still match up okay and we'll get that where it fits about right here I think that's gonna work just fine now I'll get the paintbrush tool again keyboard shortcut B and let's get this light green art brush here I'm gonna draw out one of my designs here and I'll draw out another one here and then one across here and I'll get the selection tool keyboard shortcut V and I'm going to move this over just a little bit and down and then we'll go to object transform move and this is going to be zero for horizontal and it's going to be six for the vertical and make a copy and then we need to make this copy as well so we're going to select it go to object transform move zero for horizontal minus for the vertical and press copy and we have that one set up I'm going to get some of these little berries here and we'll start adding those in I'll hold the option key down again and this is just really random kind of filling in make sure that everything is evened out and you can always come back and change these later if you feel like you have too much or not enough and 
maybe what we should do is go ahead and change our background color and that'll help us with the final design. So I'll select the gray square, come to the properties panel and change the fill color to black. And you can see these so much better now. I'm gonna move this stem and it's matching stem. So I have them both selected and I'm gonna move these down just a little bit here. And that just about does it. I think I'm gonna move this little berry here. It's looking pretty good. Maybe we can move this flower over just a little bit here. Now be sure and pay close attention to these next two steps if you want your artwork to look exactly like this on your completed swatch. You've got to expand the appearance of the artwork and then you've got to convert the results to outlines. So I'm going to open the layers panel and I'm going to lock my black square and let's come down here. We'll just click in this column and that gives me a little padlock so it can't be moved and it can't be selected because I'm going to select everything else that's on this little square and what's hanging off of it as well. And I'll come up to object and expand appearance. Now while everything is selected, I'll come back to object and I'll go down to path and outline stroke. You're not gonna notice any difference, but it's the only way some of this artwork can actually be used in the pattern swatch. And as I'm looking at this, I think I wanna add another flower. So I'm gonna grab hold of the flower here and I'm gonna hold down the option key and I'm gonna place it right here. And while it's selected, I'm gonna to have to come do the same thing to it. I'll expand it and then I'll say OK, and then I'm going to come down Path and Outline Stroke. There we go. Now we're ready to create our swatch. So I've got to unlock the background layer, and then we're going to copy it. Now I copy it by using the keyboard shortcut Command-C, and then I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut Shift-Command-V to place the copy on top of all the artwork and exactly on top of my background layer. Then I'm going to select all of the artwork, and that includes my two black squares. I'll come back to the Properties panel, and under Pathfinder, you're going to see this little ellipsis. Click here, and that gives you some more options. I'm going to come to the fourth option, which is the Crop tool, and click here. And there we have our seamless pattern swatch. It's as easy as that. I'm going to clear some space on the artboard. I'll select all of my artwork and I'll come to the layers panel and I'm going to click on the little eyeballs and we'll just hide those for now. And I'll move our swatch over to the left and open up the swatches panel. And all I have to do is drag and drop it into the swatches panel and now we have it available to use. So let's come back and go to the layers panel and I'm even going to hide this swatch. And now let's apply the swatch to an object and see how it works. I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and I'll hold down the shift and the option keys. These allow me to drag from the center out and it constrains my ellipse to a perfect circle. I'll come over to the properties panel and remove the stroke color. And then to add the swatch, I'm gonna click on this color fill icon that opens the swatches panel and I can select our new swatch. And when I click on it, Illustrator is gonna use it to seamlessly fill this circle, just like it will do with any object that I apply it to. Well, now that you've seen this video, I hope you agree with me that creating a seamless pattern swatch in Adobe Illustrator really is easy to do. The hardest part is maybe figuring out what colors to use or what artwork to include. But once you figure that out, you can actually make these pattern swatches in a matter of minutes and use them in so many different applications. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how you can edit these swatches. You can both scale them and rotate them and even move them inside of the objects that you have applied them to. And that makes these swatches even more flexible and opens up a whole variety of things that you can use them for.
Now, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, I'm going to encourage you to do that right now while you're thinking about it so you don't miss this next video or any of my future tutorials. I really look forward to hearing from you, so leave me a comment and be sure and join me next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye now.